Welcome back to Press Review. Let's start by taking a look today's front pages in the Middle East. The UAE's Gulf News leads its front page reporting that Kuwait's emir began a visit to Iran yesterday, the first by a ruler of the US allied Gulf Arab states since the 1979 Islamic Revolution, with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani saying the visit marks a decisive turning point. The paper also reports that FIFA Vice President Jim Boyce said that he could imagine a new vote on the host of the 2022 World Cup if suspicions of corruption revolving around Qatar winning the bid turn out to be true. Iran's Tehran Times leads its front page reporting that Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said that the National Reconciliation Agreements signed between the government and the opposition, including the one in Homs, indicate that the solution to the conflict can be found inside Syria. The paper also reports that Kuwaiti Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed arrived in Tehran yesterday to explore ways of strengthening ties with the Islamic Republic. And from Saudi Arabia, the Arab News reports that the General Authority for Civil Aviation is to impose a 300 Saudi Riyal hourly fine per passenger on local airliners who fail to inform travelers about flight changes 40 days, 14 days in advance. The paper also reports that World Bank President Jim Yong Kim, who arrived in Jeddah yesterday, held wide-ranging talks with Finance Minister Ibrahim al-Assad on key regional issues including challenges hampering the exclusive, the inclusive economic growth of the Middle East. The Egypt Independent leads reporting that Cairo Criminal Court is to resume the trial of ousted President Mohamed Morsi and other 34 suspects affiliated to the Muslim Brotherhood over spying for foreign agencies in a secret session. The paper also reports that the Palestinian cabinet congratulated the Egyptian people and the Arab nation on the victory of Abdel Fattah Sisi in the presidential election. And from Beirut, the, the Daily Star reports that the UCC has warned that the entire country government, as well as official exams, will be in total paralysis starting June the 7th if a controversial salary raise has not been approved. The paper also reports that the entire country, including Beirut, may face up to 10 hours of power cuts as the divide remains wide in the dispute over funding for Electricité du Liban. And now let's take a look at the top Middle East news from UK papers. The Telegraph East Middle East news reporting that Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are thought to be readying a financial aid package of 20 billion US dollars to boost Egypt's economy and support the incoming government of ex Field Marshal Abdel Fattah Sisi. The paper says that the oil rich Middle East powerhouse Arab nations have already held preliminary talks with authorities in Cairo to discuss how the line of funding will be structured, according to a report in the Arabic media over the weekend. The Independent leads Middle East News reporting that Israel's Prime Minister called on world leaders today not to recognize the Palestinian unity government, saying it will strengthen terrorism. The paper adds that the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas says such fears are unfounded, vowing the government will be composed of apolitical technocrats and will recognize Israel and renounce violence. The Guardian leads in Middle East news reporting that pressure is mounting on FIFA to rerun the bidding process for the 2022 World Cup in the wake of a bribery claim against the host Qatar. The paper says the Sunday Times obtained millions of documents that it said showed that Mohammed bin Hammam, a Qatari former FIFA executive committee member, paid £3 million sterling in cash and gifts to senior football officials to help secure Qatar's bid. And now let's take a look at the top Mideast news in international papers. From China, the Global Times reports that an Egyptian army statement said that six army men, including an, office, an officer for, from the border guard, were killed by smugglers and outlaws during a patrol in western desert area of Al-Wahat, 370 kilometers far from the capital Cairo. The paper says that the attack comes in response to the success of the border guard's recent arrest of 68 smugglers and confiscation of huge amounts of weapons, drugs and cars. And finally, the Washington Post leads Middle East News reporting that Palestinians managed to overcome last-minute obstacles to form a new government of national unity on Monday, backed by Hamas. 
The paper says the announcement of a new government represents a significant step to end the bitter seven-year feud between, uh, between the dueling uh, Palestinian political factions that separately control the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching Press Review and bye for now.